So welcome back. And since we're now familiar with complements, what they mean, what they are, and how they interact specifically, let's now have a look at the specific firm strategies that relate to complements. And we'll start out with the generic strategies of, uh, of basically dealing with complements. So one strategy would be supporting the other side. And you can think of many uh, examples, we'll have many examples here, but um, let's first conceptually think about why it may make sense to support the other side, why you might want to support a firm that doesn't even benefit you directly um, because you're not part of it. So it may make sense to support the supplier of the complement um, by enabling him to provide a better quality of the complement and to sell more of the complement. And why is that a good thing? Well, these are both good things for your own product because as we saw, the better a complement, the higher demand for your own product, or the more sales for the complement, the more demand uh, for your own product. So the more useful it becomes to have the base product. So supporting the other side can take a number of different forms, but let's take one specific example, the example of Apple. So Apple, gave laptops to students writing software for the Mac OS. And you might wonder why that's a good thing, right? Because giving out laptops to people that would have or might have otherwise also bought a laptop is, seems like just throwing away money, seems like giving away revenues that you might have otherwise have had. But remember that these students were writing software for the Mac OS. So that meant that for them, they produced more compatible software for Mac OS, meaning that more compatible software titles made using Apple's laptops more attractive. So here you get the indirect effect. You give away where you make it easier to produce complementary uh, products for your base product, and that makes use of your base product more profitable or more useful. So, Supporting the other side um, can also take even more commercial, directly commercial forms and financial terms. Let's take an example of a game console manufacturer um, for playing, uh, playing video games um, called 3DO. So 3DO faced a similar problem to many other, um, many other firms producing game consoles. And given that it was a startup, they were facing this very, very directly. So the problem they faced was that console manufacturers generally sell consoles for high prices to make profits. Okay? Especially if they don't produce their own software, then that's the only way by which they can make profits. Now, if you sell your console at a high price, this is going to attract a limited number of consumers only. And if you attract a limited number of consumers, that's a problem because it's neither optimal for console manufacturers, but also game publishers will be put off by the fact that they're producing for a small market. So how did 3DO try to solve this, uh, this issue? They tried to solve it by making game publishers pay a fee of $3 to 3DO directly for every game copy sold. And the intuition here was that by subsidizing the console, it could be sold much cheaper. So 3DO could sell consoles much cheaper and therefore attract more consumers. This was good for publishers as well because they sold more copies because there are more consumers and eventually they increase net profits. So in other words, even though you spend money um, to support the, uh, the other side of the market, um, the base product in this case, the, uh, the game console, um, it came back in the face or in the, in the, through the direction, through the channel of more consumers because the console then was cheaper. So supporting the other side would be one reason or one mechanism to uh, deal with compliments. A more extreme or more direct way of taking care of the complementary good would, you put, would be to produce it yourself. And that may make sense sometimes as well. So again, let me give in a couple of examples. Sony for example, produces a game console and they produce video games themselves, which means that whenever you buy a Sony console, you know that there's going to be a number of games available produced by Sony um, that will ideally take, uh, uh, take the advantage of all the software and all the hardware uh, produced by Sony. 
Hewlett Packard manufactures printers, but they also um, uh, manufacture printing ink and printing cartridges or ink cartridges. So again, you produce the base product and you produce the complementary product. And this might be good, but it also might have, uh, have a couple of issues. So let's have, a, let's have a look at the problems that may arise as a consequence. First of all, the market for complements may simply be unattractive. There may be a reason why you didn't go into, say, the movie business as a consumer electronics manufacturer um, if you're not particularly good at it or if it's just not a profitable business. So it may require competencies that the firm lacks, that you simply lack in production, in management, in R&D, in image, and so on. Thirdly, Prospective customers might simply be put off by the fact that the firm is producing the base good and the complementary good. So that puts them in a very dominant position. And so they might just be put off by this and therefore be hesitant to be locked into a system like that. And we'll get into that in the next video as, as well. But there are some strong advantages as well from producing complements. First of all, you can tailor the complement to your own product. So you can make sure that the complementary product takes advantage of the main strength of your base product and vice versa. You can exert quality control for the complement, right? One of the big problems that uh, many um, software manufacturers or many, uh, many hardware manufacturers face is that the software for the product is just not very good. And so and, uh, in, in turn, that might be a way of uh, exerting quality control, simply integrating and making sure you produce both the base good and the complementary good. And thirdly, is that simply you can make more money from doing that. Uh, you may make more money by internalizing the positive effects of the complement on your own product. So better quality complementary products mean higher utility for your base product means you can demand higher prices. Um, now, and that's what we're going to be looking in the, uh, at in the next video. We're going to be looking at cross subsidies, we're going to be looking at bundling, and we're going to be looking at increasing lock-in for a situation where I own both the base product and the complementary product. So, as we've seen, in some situations it might make sense for a firm to support the producer of a complementary product or even produce directly the complement itself. So, as I said in the next video, we'll have a closer look at the second option and we'll look at strategies that firms can undertake if they produce two complementary products. So stay tuned and see you in a second.